Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch that is in a class by itself as both an innovation and as an investment. One of the first four dozen F.P. Journe Chronomet of Essence ever manufactured. This this example is 38 millimeters in platinum with a rose gold dial, brass movement, Eleanor case. You can even see that the engraving on the case back, super shallow and emblematic of these early examples. Zero, zero is the case's year of manufacture and zero, zero was the first year for this model. Now taking a look at the watch, 38 millimeters in diameter in platinum. It measures a fairly compact 8.8 millimeters thick. From lug tip to lug tip, it's 44.5 millimeters and it has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and it wears beautifully. It is quite thin, so it fits underneath a cuff, but it's also so short across the wrist at less than 45 millimeters lug to lug that really any size wrist can wear this watch. It's suitable for a man or a woman. The timepiece includes a F.P. Journe factory alligator leather strap, large rectangular scale, medium brown on the top, semi-gloss finish, folded edge, monotone stitch. You can see brand new strap on the bottom, alligator leather, small round scale. So gator on both sides is more expensive, but it lasts longer, and that's why Journe uses it. Now you can see the strap is newer than the case, because at the time this watch was made, you would have had calfskin on the bottom, and you wouldn't have had these pull tab spring bars. The pull tabs allow you to remove the strap from the case without tools. You can also see that the curved spring bar allows the lugs to be drilled fairly close to the case with no impediment to the motion of the strap. They can swing freely. Uh, the buckle is a platinum piece matching the case. And then we have a case that is all of high polish with blended, integrated, nicely tapered lugs. The mid case is defined by the overlapping lip of the case back in the bezel. The bezel is domed. The crown, well, one of them, this is the flyback crown, more on that in a moment. It is a knurled profile on the side, polished with a double dimple on its end. The crown up at 12 o'clock is used for winding the two movements in the watch and also for setting the two dials. A note about that. There are two separate movements in this watch. As you can see, we have one crown wheel, but then two ratchet wheels with two clicks on top of two barrels with two drivetrains with two escapements with two freestanding free sprung balances. They are coupled together by resonance and nothing but resonance. No mechanical link between them. The parasitic emanations of energy from frictional losses result in the two synchronizing to each other. They beat in opposition but identically to the point that they're coupled together so they vary by no more than five seconds per 24 hours. So the idea here is that if for whatever reason, vibration, position, disruption of any kind, one of them slows, the other will speed it back up by an equal and opposite magnitude. Hence, it is a self-regulating chronometer, chronomet a resonance. Now, the watch has a power reserve indicator that, like a marine chronometer, moves backward. So it indicates the hours since fully wound. At full wind, it indicates zero hours since fully wound. You have one power reserve indicator for both sides of the movement. Power reserve for both sides is 42 hours. Now, we have two independent dials. It it's not really a dual time watch. That's not its mission, but it works as a dual time watch. You can set both sides independently. Now it takes about seven to 10 minutes for resonance to get a grasp on the watch and actually couple the two sides. So the seconds hands might not be synchronized. For aesthetics, F.P. Journe gave you a flyback mechanism that synchronizes the hands. The hands are blued and of course hours and minutes are those lovely tapered biomorphic Journe forms with his distinctive font used radially arrayed. The bezels framing the brass dial centers are made of polished stainless steel, and we have the dial side bolts that would become a universal F.P. Journe styling calling card. You can also see that some color gradients develop on these earlier dials. Uh, they have a tangible, almost varnished, sort of surfacing above the gold base, which is why you get a little bit of the impression that the characters printed on the dial are floating, and, and that too is emblematic of these early Journe watches. Now, the movement here is different than the ones that came after. In mid-2004, this design was converted over to rose gold, but the architecture changed too. Look at one of the newer watches, and you'll find that you see the barrel arbor centers, but you don't actually see the ratchet wheels. This bridge architecture that gives you the clicks and the ratchet wheels is considered to be more aesthetically pleasing. Now, we have two balances, both free-sprung, both beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, both adjusted in six positions, and then there's a little rack and pinion at the center. You can see the gold pinion and a black polished rack and that's used to very precisely adjust the distance between them to encourage 
the coupling, via resonance. We have stripes across the bridges, it's brass bridges, but the silver color is the rhodium with which they're plated. You can see that the edges of the bridges are nicely unglaged. The screws were all black polished, and we have engine turning on the base plate. In its day, this watch, which has to be considered vintage, would have been 30 meters water resistant. I recommend you not test the theory today. As you can see, it features French hallmarks on the case and the Eleanor Maker's mark, because up and through mid 2008, up through mid-2008, when he moved the factory to Geneva, Jorn relied on Eleanor, which was based in France. They'd supplied his cases since his pocket watch days, and they were his case supplier, which is why this platinum case has both French and Swiss hallmarks on it, as well as the Eleanor maker's mark. So Eleanor became Boitier de Genève, which is Jorn's case factory which continues functioning to this day. You can also see just how shallow the engraving is. Everything is shallow. This is, again, one of the first four dozen resonants ever made. And that stamping of 00, zero is also emblematic of a practice that ended about mid-2005. They stopped stamping the case with the case year of manufacture. So there is a ton to love with this watch. Hugely collectible and one of the most important innovations in horology in the 20th century. It's also one of two watches, along with the original Tourbillon Remontoir, absolutely essential if you want a collection of the canonical F.P. Journe classics, the real milestone watches. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.